Hello. Thank you for worshiping with us here at Jefferson Street Missionary Baptist Church, where we are loved by Christ to love like Christ. And regardless of your means of connection today, if you're here in person or if you are watching online, we are elated to have you in our presence today. We ask that you would continue to connect with us via Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at J Street Church. It is our hope and it is our desire that you would find community here. We are not a perfect church, but J Street is perfect for me. We are a loving congregation seeking to do the will of the Father, and we invite you to be a part of this life journey together with us. Won't you come on, be a part of us, join with us, connect with us. We're glad to have you. Hey there, family and friends of Jefferson Street. If I can grab your attention for a moment, I want to share some things that are going on here at our beloved J Street. Develop and enhance your Christian education by joining us for Sunday school each Sunday morning at 845 Central Standard Time via our online platforms. After Sunday school, we invite you to make your way to the House of Worship here at 2708 Jefferson Street, where I was Spirit-filled service begins at 10 a.m. We certainly don't want you to miss out on the awesome praise and worship experience to include what we trust will be a much needed word. So if for some reason you cannot attend in person, we invite you to join us via our virtual platforms as J Street goes live. On Tuesdays at 6 p.m., we gather as a church family via our Zoom platform for Soul Strengthening Bible Study. Please join us and grow with us in the Word of God. Each Wednesday at 6.45 p.m. is our midweek prayer call. The Bible teaches us that we should always pray. But this is a set-aside time for us to come together corporately and be encouraged as a church family in prayer. It would be great to have you join us on the call. To all parents with children aged 3 to 10 years old, who would, we would love to have those children involved in our great experience on their level. J Street Kids Worship is just the place for them to be. This time of youth fellowship and engagement take place every Sunday except on the fifth Sunday in our fellowship hall. Family, we are a blessed congregation and exciting things are on the horizon. We're starting our renovation project, so we will be virtual for two weeks Sundays, April 21st and 28th. We will be online only on our Facebook page and YouTube. We are looking forward to returning on Sunday, May 5th. And guess what? Our 137th church anniversary and our guest will be Bishop v Victor Cousin from Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, as Bishop states, it's matter of factly that we aren't a perfect church but we are a loving and welcoming one. If by chance you are in such, of a, such a church to call home, look no further. We invite you at any given time, become a member of our family so that we can grow together in Christ. Thank you for your attention. We pray you have a blessed week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Stand on your feet. Open up your mouth and just tell the Lord, thank you. Come on. He's allowed us to make it another Sunday. That's a reason to give God praise. He is such an amazing God and he deserves an amazing praise. Scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Why? Because he's good. Anybody know we serve a good God? He is a holy God. He is an awesome God. He is an all-knowing God. He is a sovereign God. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So we just come to give him praise. Let's look before the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you just for being great, God. We thank you for being mighty. God, we thank you that you are a never-failing God. 
God, and before anything, we ask that you clean us up. Whatever is not like you, God, we ask that you take it out, God. Purify our hearts, oh God, our minds, our souls, our spirits, God. Help us, oh God, to be on one accord in worship today, God. God, we ask that the Holy Spirit fall fresh upon this place, God. God, anoint him fall fresh upon this room in Jesus' name. God, bless our pastor. Bless this entire church, oh God. Allow us to go higher in praise and worship in you in this morning, God. And it is in Jesus' name that I do pray. Somebody shout hallelujah and amen. Good morning, J Street. Our hymn for this morning is Never Alone. He never said it would be easy, but he did promise that he'd never leave us alone. I've seen the lightning flashing and heard the thunder roll. I felt his breakers dashing, which tried to conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of my Savior, he made me still fight on. He If you're really grateful that God will never leave you alone, he said, I'll be with you always, even to the end. So can you shout hallelujah for a God that will never leave you? He's always there, and he'll never turn his back, and that's something to be grateful for. Anybody grateful that you can go to God in prayer? Come on, is anybody really grateful that you can go to God in prayer for all that you need, anything that's bothering you? We can take it to the Lord in prayer. Clap your hands in this place. Makes no difference what the problem.
Amen, amen. Aren't we glad that when this earthly tabernacle shall be dissolved, we've got a building not made by hand, eternal in the heavens. Amen. It's prayer time. Won't you join us at the altar? No matter what's going on in your life, if you're dealing with some challenges or circumstances, or if everything's all good, come on to the altar and let's just tell God thank you. Or you can pray for me or one of your brothers or sisters or other friends of God here, because certainly we all need some prayer. Amen, amen. And if you aren't inclined to come to the altar, that's okay too. We just ask that wherever you are, that you form community, that we pray together. We know the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. And where there is much prayer, there is much power. Where there's little prayer, there's little power. And certainly in the world we need today, we need power. Amen, amen. Wherever you are, let's make sure no one is left alone. Our ministers are moving just in case you don't have anyone with you. Our ministers will come and pray with you. We know we need prayer. Amen. We've got to battle some state legislators. We need prayer. Some of these demons, you can't battle them with flesh and blood. Amen. You need power from the Lord. Amen. Some of us are going to doctor's appointments, and we need prayer. Amen. Some of us have to go to the school. We certainly need prayer. Come on and pray with me. Gracious and kind God, thank you, God. Thank you for a brand new day, brand new mercies. Thank you, God. God, thank you for allowing us to join together one more time physically in your house of prayer. Thank you, God, for safe traveling grace. And thank you, God, for allowing us to come together with our sisters and brothers and friends of God. God, we thank you, God, for this old ship of Zion called J Street. Thank you, God, that she has landed many a thousand. Thank you, God, that she's still holding up the blood-stained banner of Christ, still a gathering place for the believers, a still beacon on a dark hill. God, now we thank you for every sister, every brother, every friend of God that has gathered in this place, God, and online, God. You know what they need, what they stand in need of, God. And whatever it is, God, we ask that you meet it. Whatever it is, God, financial, legal, God, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's with their job, God, you know and you go and meet it, please, God. Whether it's in their body, in their minds, God, whatever it is, if it's in their wallet, God, you know, God, and you, we trust that you will see about those things that concern us. So, God, we lay them at your altar, God. We give it all to you, God. That we've done all we can do. They're too big for us to carry. And we know what concerns us concerns you, God. Now, God, we come thanking you for the, the opportunity to call on your name, that you incline your ear to hear our, our, our request, God. Thank you, God, that you're not too big of a God not to listen to us. You're not too far away that you can't hear us when we cry, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are a present God in our lives, Lord, that when we cry, you wipe tears. When, when we have rough days, you whirl dark clouds away. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are no shorter than your word, and you're always available when we cry, when we pray, God. We thank you, God, that we can go to you anytime, any place, anywhere, and we can call upon your name, and you are sure to hear us and answer sir by and by thank you God thank you God that you walk with us and you talk with us and every once in a while you tell us that we're your own thank you God that you're a prayer answer a prayer hearing God thank you God thank you God for being our God now God you've been good to us You've been real good to us, God. And before we leave this altar, we won't dare leave your house and not tell you thank you. Thank you, God, for wiping our tears away. Thank you, God, for mending our broken hearts. Thank you, God, for helping us to love again. Thank you, God, for helping us to make it through grief. Thank you, God, for helping us to make it back from divorce. Thank you, God, for helping us to make it through a bad relationship. Thank you, God, for supplying all of our needs. Thank you, God 
God for lifting us up and keeping our minds together. Thank you, God, for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you, God, for letting the suicide attempt not work. Thank you, God, for blessing us with families. Thank you, God, for our spouses and significant others. Thank you, God, for our children. Thank you, God, for our jobs. Thank you, God, for our transportation. Thank you, God, for joy in our souls, clapping in our hands. Thank you, God, for saving us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you didn't leave us where you found us. Thank you, God, for picking us up and turning our lives around and fixing our hearts and minds that we can live a life for you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you've been good to us. Thank you, God, for giving us new starts and new directions and new ways. Thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah to your name, God. You've been good to us. And we're grateful, God. You've been good to us. You've given us opportunities when we didn't deserve it. You've covered our sins and our flaws so our enemies couldn't get to them. You've forgiven our sins, God, and we thank you. Thank you, God. Now, God, be with us in the rest of the service. Let your spirit fall down. Let it rain down. Let it saturate this place. That when we leave here, we'll be more inclined to live according to your purpose and your will. Lord, be with us in our service. The rest of the singing and the preaching, God, sit on us. Let your Holy Spirit fall that we will live more like you. We'll walk more like you. We'll talk more like you. And we'll be courageous to do your th way, things your way. God, we love you, we trust you, we believe you, and you're awesome to us. Now, God, we pray all of these blessings. It's in the name of justice, of joy, of peace, of love, of liberation, and that brown-skinned day laborer who was executed by the state, but risen by the Spirit. It's in the name of Jesus that we go forward and follow you in a new way. It's in the name of the only God who can start us in a new direction, in the God we will follow forward. It's in that name of Christ we pray. Amen. Yes. On your way to your seat, if you're gonna go and know God makes all things new, hug your neighbor and tell him God makes all things new. And we're going. If you believe that, won't you sing that this morning? You make all things. We have the blessed privilege this morning of dedicating two children back to God. And I would ask that the families of Baby Kayana and uh, uh, Kylan would come now. Both families would come. Amen. Kylan's family and Kayana's family would come and meet us here at the altar. I'll scoot down this way to my left. Then we'll get the other. And let the baby come near the center. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's get him out of here. Yes, let him back in here. Let him stay here. You stay here.
it is a blessed privilege and an honor to be able to dedicate children back to God. One, it is commendable that the parents of the child want to show an outward sign that they've made a parental commitment to train their child in the fear, in the respect, in the honor, and the glory belonging to God. Secondly, it means much to the church because a church can't be much of a church if there are no subsequent generations that are a part of it. Uh, it is our faith tradition not to baptize infants or baptize children before they come to the age of recognition in which they can decide and acknowledge God's salvation in and for, the, for their lives themselves. But it is a signal honor to be able to take these precious children and dedicate them back to God. And it only doesn't take our natural families to help raise children, but it takes our spiritual family to help raise children. So as these families stand before us preparing to dedicate these children back to God, it also is a challenge to us as a church family that we too will engage in the process to be sure that these children don't receive trauma and drama and hurt from this place, but that we will be a family that will nurture them, not only to be uh, Christians, but to be successful in this journey we call life. Amen? Amen. Amen. To these parents and to these families, we say God bless you, and J Street has your back. Uh, but I want to ask these parents several questions. Uh, and uh, family, y'all can't overrun the parents. Y'all are there to support, but you cannot overrun the parents. We know grandparents love them. We know aunties and uncles and godparents will always be there. But it is important that we allow the parents to be the focal voice in the lives of their children. Amen. I ask you all, as you have been given these precious gifts from God, do you commit to raising them under the guidance and direction of our God? Do you commit to doing your best to train them with godly principles found in our scriptures? Do you commit to training them up in church and don't let them get to the soccer field and the football field and the gymnastics gym before they get to the sanctuary. Family, we love you all. We have your back. And we're excited to see as you all continue to parent these little ones how God blesses them. Excuse me for a moment. There is no power in oil. It's the God who we believe anoints the oil that has the power. And we anoint with oil as New Testament scripture gives instruction and direction. It's a sign and a show of God's presence and God's power over these little ones. Would you all pray with me? Oh, great and gracious God. We thank you for the lives of Kayana, and we thank you for the life of Kylie. We thank you, Lord, that you have purposed great things for them. That while we have not yet seen what all they shall be, you as the author and the finisher of our faith, you as the omniscient, all-knowing God that knows the end before the beginning started, knows exactly the great potential that you have placed in both of these little ones. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus that your plan for their life, the plan to prosper them, the plan to bring them to a good and expected end, the plan to make them the head and not the tail, the plan 
to make them lenders and not borrowers, the plan to make them more than conquerors, the plan to not make them a statistic, but let them to be an outlier, help them to be a leader, help them to be a change agent, help them to be excellent students, help them to be excellent people, help them to be successful in all your plan that you have for their life. We believe in the name of Jesus, no devil in hell can stop it. We believe that no plan or no attack of the enemy shall prosper or no weapon that's formed against them shall be able to prosper. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would be a hedge of protection around them, O oh God. Father God, we pray that no ill-intending adult who, who is supposed to protect and care for them takes advantage of them in any way. God, we pray in the name of Jesus for the teachers that they'll have, the bus drivers they'll have, the cafeteria workers they'll come in contact with, the coaches and the counselors that they'll experience, that every adult that comes into their life during this time will be one that shows love, nurture, care, and concern. We pray for these young parents, oh God. Parenting is not easy. Father God, parenting is not an easy task. And Lord, it takes your strength and your guidance and your help to make them and cultivate them into the parents you would have them to be. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would strengthen them with wisdom, that you would give them endurance, that you would give them foresight and wisdom beyond their years, that they will be able to situate and make decisions and make homes for these children that will be prosperous and that will better their life. Lord, I pray for the families that have stood behind them at this altar, that they will be a support system, oh God, that they won't be critical and controlling and domineering, but that they'll be a support system to help lift the hands of these parents like Aaron and her lifted the hands of Moses while the Israelites were in battle. Let them be a support that these parents will need. Lord, I also pray today as we dedicate these children that you would equip Jefferson Street to continue to be a loving congregation. Lord, I pray that these two would not suffer any church hurt or church trauma in the confines of the walls of Jefferson Street. Pray in the name of Jesus that this place would help mold and fashion and shape their spiritual life so they'll have a greater relationship with you. Lord, I pray that one day, as we dedicate them, one day we'll baptize them. I pray, Lord, that one day you will come to make them your Savior, and that you would allow them to find the love and everlasting joy of a relationship with you. We dedicate these precious ones back to you, our God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church together said, Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's celebrate these families and these little ones. Come on. All right. We have certificates for you all, for our parents, and you all may go back to your seats. God bless you. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. God bless you. Amen. I certainly want to take time uh, to honor. I've got to want to make sure we celebrate Pastor and Lady Shagwire who are here. Amen. Son of Jefferson Street. And we thank God for them being here. I, they've got to go to another service, but I'm glad they were here and able to partake uh, in the dedication of Kylan. We appreciate them and thank God for them. Certainly we want to welcome each and every one of you to Jefferson Street Missionary Baptist Church. If you're a first-time guest or visitor, could you just lift your hand in the air? If we have any first-time guests or visitors, all right, keep your hand in your air. We don't want to embarrass you. We just want to give you a token of appreciation. And come on, church, let's give them a good mid-state North Nashville J Street welcome. Amen, amen. It's so good to see all of you all. I'm going to ask 
Uh, we've got several announcements that I want to share. First, I want to thank you all for your participation uh, and your giving and your warmth and your celebration of Reverend Roosevelt Keys and Reverend Tony Keys as we installed him as pastor of the St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church on yesterday. So I appreciate you all for participating and loving on them in the ways in which you have. I also want to thank you all for your participation as we are planning in our church renovation. Uh, the next two Sundays, help us spread the word. We will be in church online only, okay? If you come to Jefferson Street on Sunday, April 21st, or Sunday, April 28th, you're going to be here by yourself. Uh, certainly, if there are visitors or the like, we're going to have people, and we'll redirect them to let them know how they can join us virtually. But please, ma'am, please, sir, help us spread the word that we'll be virtually only the next two Sundays uh, as we prepare our renovations. I'm asking that the men of our church, if you can, my brothers, please give us about 15 minutes after church. We have a few things that we need to move out of our restrooms to our storage facilities. And Brother Bill Hood, is he in the service now? I don't know. He's outside. He's out there taking care of business. But he's going to be serving as our point person. So, men, if you're able to help after service, if you'll just stay here in the sanctuary, Bill Hood will give you some direction. Him and Brother Carl Hayes will give you some direction as it relates to the final things that we need to move in preparation for our church renovation. It's going to be nice, y'all. I'm excited. It's going to look good. Amen. I'm excited about it. Uh, we also uh, are asking uh, that you would prepare for our church anniversary celebration. Amen. Jefferson Street has been blessed for 137 years. Amen. Amen. To be a church that God has blessed. And there have been many changes. There's been name changes. There's been relocations. There's been other buildings, but we are thankful for the family called Jefferson Street. And for 137 years, God has blessed us. Uh, my pastor, Bishop Victor Cousins, will be our speaker for our 137th church anniversary, and so I am anticipating that God is going to have something to say to us to push us a few more years further Amen. And so we're excited about it. And listen, we want you to stay abreast. We will have a couple of events later in the month celebrating our church anniversary. But we want to make sure that we took care of our renovations and that type of thing. And certainly a part of our church anniversary is our giving during our church anniversary celebration. And it's been our tradition over the past several years uh, that every family would give $150 as a part of our church anniversary celebration. And so we're not pressuring anybody. We're not twisting your arm. But if you would like to give to our church anniversary, those funds are going to go to help us uh, replenishing and uh, reviving our account after our church renovation is complete. Uh, and uh, $150 for some, you may want to give more. $150 may be too much of a stretch in your budget. But let's make a sacrificial offering for our church anniversary as a way to show God uh, thanksgiving for how he has blessed the Jefferson Street Church. Amen? Amen. 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 Also, uh, I want to ask for our prayers uh, for one of our associate ministers, Minister DJ Eason. You might not know him personally, but he takes pictures. You see him running around. He helps lead our men's ministry. Uh, his father went home to be with the Lord. And so I'm asking that you would keep Minister DJ Eason and his entire family lifted in prayer. Amen. And we certainly want to continue to keep uh, the family of Sister Rebecca King lifted in prayer. She went home to be with the Lord and we funeralized uh, her on Friday. And so we want to continue to keep that entire family lifted in prayer. And we want you to know we love you all in our praying for you. Uh, it's usually our tradition on the first Sunday to acknowledge April birthdays and anniversaries, and we didn't do it. Uh, so I want to take the time for all of our April birthdays, if you would please stand. Amen. All of our April birthdays. Amen. 
today, today is baby Miracle's birthday. She went to Children's Church. She said, it's my birthday. I'm going to big church. But she went on to Children's Church. Today is baby Miracle's birthday. And today is Minister Kevin Tolliver's birthday today. So we celebrate all of our April birthdays. God bless you. April's a good month to be born in. Amen. And certainly, are there any wedding anniversaries, any anniversaries that are taking place in the month of April? Oh, I thought somebody pointed behind me. The who? Oh, the Collins. The Collins. Yes, yes. And they were here this weekend in celebration of Reverend Keys. Uh, but we certainly thank God for Brother and Sister Collins, amen, who are celebrating their anniversary in the month of April as well. Uh, listen, God has been good to us. God has been kind to us, and it is a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our choir is coming, and then we'll hear what the Lord has to say to us.
him. I'll trust him. I'll trust him. I'll trust him. I'll praise him. I'll praise him. I'll praise him. I'll praise him with my hands. I'll praise him with my feet. I'll praise him with my voice. I'll praise him. I'll serve 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to make up in your own mind. You've got to make up in your own heart. You've got to make the decision for yourself that come what may, I might have to cry sometime but I'm still going to serve him. I might get frustrated sometimes, but I'm still going to serve him. I may want to give up and quit sometime, but I'm still going to serve him. I may feel like the world is against me, but I'm still going to serve him. I may be depressed, but I'm serving. I might be mad, but I'm serving. I might have questions, but I'm serving. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Is there anybody here that can celebrate God and thank your God for the endurance hey, 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 to stay? Whew. I'll serve him, I'll serve him, I'll serve him, I'll serve him. He been too good for me not to serve him. He been too faithful for me not to serve him. He's been there too many times for me not to serve him.
Come on, lift your hands and just tell the Lord yes. Lift your hands and tell the Lord yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes. Come on, give the Lord your yes this morning. Give the Lord your yes. Hallelujah. There is release in giving God your yes. Come on, give God your yes. Hallelujah. Give him a yes this morning. We're standing all over the sanctuary. Father, we surrender to you our yes. That even when serving you is difficult, when doing the right thing is hard, when following your will is stressful, we still tell you yes. When we can't see the direction you're having us to go, remind us we walk by faith and not by sight. We still can tell you yes. Father God, we can tell you yes. When we are unsure, we can tell you yes. When our minds are still wavering because we trust you. Because we've seen you do it too many times before to doubt that you can do it again. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we surrender our wills to you that come what may, we've made it a decision in our heart to tell you yes. And Father, we ask now that you release the anointing that makes preaching easy. We need to hear from you. Give direction to us from your holy word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you're my strength and you're my redeemer. Lord, let the seed of your word fall on the soil of our heart, that it might germinate, produce fruit, not for our gain, but for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The church said together, amen and amen. Would you turn with me uh, to familiar passage of scripture? God has given us fresh wind to view it again. Daniel chapter 3, and uh, you're familiar with the story, but I will begin at verse 14 from the New Living Translation for our hearing and reading. I remember my parents bought me my first Bible, and it was not a full Bible, it was a picture Bible with stories in it, uh, and as a child, when I began to read, soon as I was reading, I was preaching. 
and uh, I began to preach those Bible stories as they came in the book. And one thing about childlike imagination, it don't matter how many times you read a story to a child or how many times they tell you that story, they are excited about it as if it's their first time hearing it. And I would ask us to lean in this morning to this familiar story because I believe God has fresh wind for us to hear from it. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. Because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them in the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Stop there. I want to talk from the subject this morning. Stop bowing. Stop bowing. Martin Nemoller was a German Lutheran pastor who initially supported uh, the Nazi regime. He was a conservative German nationalistic thinker, and as a young seminarian and pastor, he sided with the Nazi regime in its origin. He voted that that regime would take power to help reconstruct, rebuild, and revive Germany. It was not until Adolf Hitler and his policies began infringing on the church politics and politics that this young pastor began to become disenfranchised with Nazi regime. He voted and supported Nazi Germany even with all of Nazis all of Nazis Germany a hatred and rhetoric as it rose to power. It was not until Nazi Germany began interfering with what happened in the church and the politics thereof that this young pastor changed his mind about the benefits of a Nazi regime. You may not know his name, but I'm pretty sure you're familiar with his quote. First, they came for the socialists. And I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then 
they came for the trade unionists. And I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak for me. And his quote ought to challenge us this morning, family. It ought to convict us. It ought to move us into some type of self-reflection that our own silence, our own indifference, our own comfort, and our own bias can allow fiery furnaces to continue to burn. I hope you shouted because you may not shout on this sermon. So the furnaces of this world are hot and burning because God's people keep on bowing down to the Nebuchadnezzars of this world. The furnaces of this world are heated, are ablaze, are burning folk up. Not because they are so hot, but because there are not enough fire extinguishers. There are not enough spiritual firefighters ready to stare fiery furnaces in the face and put out the fire. To have all of these NAACPs, National Action Networks, Interdenominational Ministers Fellowships, all of the civic organizations we have that are celebrating 100 plus years, all of the fraternities and sororities we have that I'm proud to be a member of, we still got a lot of fiery furnaces. To have all of what we have amassed as a people when we reflect over where we've come as a people there still are a lot of fiery furnaces that are ablaze. To have all these churches having church all the time, drive down the street, you bump into a church and turn the corner and there's another one. To have all of these churches, there are still a lot of fiery furnaces that are ablaze. And they are ablaze because people like you and I keep on bowing down instead of fighting them. And my brothers and my sisters, these fiery furnaces are not hard to find. We are not ignorant to the furnaces that are ablaze in our contemporary culture. You know the school system is a fiery furnace. When our state legislators have now made it feasible and legal, appropriate and funded for teachers to carry guns in classrooms and we ain't figured out how to handle students keeping guns out of classrooms. Now the school ain't going to be a place of learning. The school is going to be a shootout. There are fiery furnaces in our schools. But the fires keep burning in the school because we don't have enough of us who got some sense, enough of us who have got our degrees, enough of us who have assumed and amassed some wealth. We don't go back to the school to help tutor and aid our teachers and, and find some students to mentor to help put the fires out. We are not unaware of the fiery furnace in our school. Our kids just have graduated and since they ain't no longer there, we're no longer concerned. We are not ignorant to the fiery furnaces of poverty. Just to live now in our city, we are at about six figure salary to live comfortably as a single adult in Davidson County. And we are not unaware that that is the climate in which we live. But here it is, those of us that have made some means, that have been able to rub some nickels together, when we have the opportunity to assist those that don't have, 
we run people through the gauntlet of questioning and, and judgment and being critical. You can have a college degree, have your head on straight, pay all your bills, do all what you're supposed to do, and in Nashville, still come up short. That's a fiery furnace that many of us turn our back on people and ignore. Now, that is not to say that you by yourself or me by myself will be able to change these fiery furnaces. But you and I together can be sure to put at least one of them out. And my brothers and my sisters, like we learn from this German Lutheran pastor, sometimes we have to put differences aside to make sure we can work collaboratively together to put out some fires. It's a shame. I'm going to get in trouble, but I'm here, so I'm going to stay. It's a shame that black folk and Latinx folk and immigrant folk can't get on the same page because we're fighting the same battle. Don't make no sense when the state legislator puts out a bill against LGBTQIA folk, yeah. and on the same docket, they got a bill against black people. And because you may not agree with who people sleep with, you don't want to link up with them. We need to link up with everybody to make sure we can get some changes done. It's a shame that black folk and poor white folk who have always been set at odds against each other in the history of our nation can't collaborate to make sure we don't let a Trump walks back into the White House because you think Joe Biden is too old. Baby, give me an old Joe Biden before you give me an old Trump any day. There are many fiery furnaces that we have to put out. And as we look at Daniel chapter 3, if we're not too careful, we'll let the familiarity of the story, the shout of not being burned, cause us to miss out on the significance of what really happens. Because Daniel chapter 3 is sandwiched between Daniel chapter 1 through Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 1 through Daniel chapter 6 is what we call court stories or court tales. They are a particular genre of scripture that is situated during the time of exile for the children of God for them to understand this simple truth. That while you might be under the thumb, under the control or the influence of a worldly power that seems too strong for you to defeat, the God you serve is always above the court of man. These court tales let us know that while there is an earthly ruler, there is always a heavenly ruler that sits above the earthly ruler. See, sometimes we miss our place to shout that there always is a reminder that no matter how hard things might feel and be right now, the God I serve is always in control. The God I serve is not never intimidated by the difficulties that go on down here. And since God ain't intimidated, I might be uncomfortable, but since I know the God I serve, I can be confident in the fact that if God is in control, things will still work out. Matter of fact, the God that I serve knows how to take all things and work them together for our good. But in these six, first six chapters of Daniel, we'll discover 
that they are a reinforcement of the reality uh, that God wants his people, wants God's people to know uh, that no matter what's going on, God still is in control. In Daniel chapter 1, read it when you get home, uh, the, the challenge of the court tale there is that King Nebuchadnezzar wants people to eat his diet. He wants Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego uh, to forget what God told them they ought to be eating uh, uh, and eat what he has set before them. Uh, but Daniel in his courage says, no, King, I'm going to keep hold of what God told me to eat. Uh, your pigs feeding your chitlins and all of that looks good, uh, but God told me not to eat that, so I'm I'm not going to eat that. Uh, and then the king looks back at the people uh, who he told to eat what he wanted them to eat uh, and looks at Daniel who held closer uh, to the dietary restrictions of God. Uh, and Daniel over the time period is stronger than the ones who the king let eat what they wanted to. Uh, God is trying to show in Daniel chapter 1 uh, that God is above Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, in Daniel chapter 2, uh, 4 and 5 you'll learn that all the astrologers and wise people of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom could not appropriately nor accurately interpret the king's dreams. But it's Daniel who's able to listen to the king and interpret his dream. It's God trying to let us know that his wisdom is always above the wisdom of the world and that God can give us supernatural insight and allow us to see what others cannot uh, know what others do not know uh, and achieve what others cannot through uh, God's power. Uh, it's Daniel chapter 6 uh, that there is a lion's den. Uh, this was a chamber of torture and execution and punishment in the king's court. Uh, but when Daniel goes down in the lion's den uh, it's no longer a chamber of execution. Uh, it's a nap in a playpen at the zoo uh, because Daniel doesn't getting eaten alive by the lions uh, they go down the next morning uh, and say good morning Daniel uh, and Daniel looks back up at them and says good morning y'all I'm still here uh, and that's just a reminder that when you put your trust in God uh, regardless of the situations you're in uh, God knows how to pull you out uh, and pull you through uh, and it's here in Daniel chapter 3 uh, this court tale of the fiery furnace. Y'all don't mind if I teach it and preach it, do you? And my brothers and my sisters, all of the people are bowing down to Nebuchadnezzar. They're bowing down to his gods. They're bowing down to the golden image. And my brothers and my sisters, if we're not careful, we'll make this story more spiritual than it really is. Because we'll sit in the sanctuary of Jefferson Street on Sunday morning and put our nose up to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We'll put our nose up to the other people that are bowing down at the sound of King Nebuchadnezzar's music and golden statue. And we'll say, I would never bow down like that. I would never bow down to another golden statue. I know the God that I serve, but my brothers and my sisters, uh, things are more insidious uh, and things are more sneaky than that. Uh, the enemy of this world don't need to set up music and a statue uh, for us to bow down. Uh, many of us are bowing down and we ain't even realized it uh, because we bow down uh, when we're too busy uh, and we don't find the time uh, to take our time to be a blessing to other people uh, to figure out how other people's fiery furnaces uh, can get turned down. Uh, we are indifferent. Uh, we don't have to bow down. We've got this philosophy that it's me, myself, and I. Uh, and as long as me and mine's are good, uh, I don't worry about anybody else. Uh, ain't no music had to play. You bowing down uh, and you're playing in God's face uh, because you and yours wouldn't be all right uh, if it hadn't been for God uh, or for somebody else uh, helping you get to where you are. We're bowing down because we're too selfish. We 
think that what we have we got out of our own strength and out of our own hand when the truth is at least about myself I ain't that smart I ain't that strong I ain't that good I'm not that holy I only have what I have because of his mercies and because of his grace and like Don Staley said because of his uncommon favor that's the only reason that I'm here and how is it we know what we've been through and then we got the nerve to be selfish and act like it only belonged to us in the first place. We're bowing down because we're too insecure and shamed by our own journeys and we think if we speak up and stand up for other people that will give people a preview and insight to the struggles that we used to have. Baby we all got a story. We all got a past. We all done some things we ain't proud of but your silence is bowing down because somebody else needs to hear your testimony and needs the advocacy of your voice to help them make it through the fiery furnace they are going in and then we bow down when we can write a whole dissertation give our own commentary can write out the wrongs of everybody else can tell what they should have did could have did how they should have did it and when they should have did it but we never take the opportunity to put our own hands in the dirt and put all the ideas and actions and criticisms you got for everybody else where your receipts at what have you done where have you tried failure is okay as long as you try but for some of us there's a shift there's a change there's this inner conviction and courage some got to change that 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 this trajectory sister down neva that our community is on some got to change that i don't know what it is i'm supposed to do i don't know where my first step ought to be but i do know it's got to be somewhere that 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 the journey our world and our country and our nation and our community and our people and our families seem to be on. Lord, this, 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 this ain't right. There's got to be some type of solution or change agent activity that I personally can do. My brothers and my sisters, this nudge, this, this discomfort, this, 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 this pull you are feeling is the spirit of God. We have to be able to stand up, speak out, say something, do something, even when the fiery furnace is in front of us. Why should we do it? Because Daniel 3 lets us know it's in the fiery furnace where Jesus is. Long before we heard of a virgin Mary, long before the incarnation of 42 generations, long before a silent night in Bethlehem, Jesus was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And maybe the problem is, my brothers and my sisters, is we have been looking for Jesus in sanctuaries and cathedrals and looking for Jesus in the mayor's office and and looking for Jesus in boardrooms and and looking for Jesus in the areas of profit and money and looking for Jesus in the areas of opulence and wealth. But Jesus ain't there. Maybe we are feeling this nudge because Jesus wants us to get in the fire and that's where we'll see Jesus. And if we read our Bibles, we should not be too uh, su uh, surprised that Jesus is in the fire. Because Jesus said, if, uh, when I was naked, yeah. you clothed me. That, that sounded like a fire. When I was sick and you came and saw about me and I was in prison and you thought about me and you spent some 
time with me. When I was hungry, you fed me. You did it to me. That, that sounds like some fire. And too often, we're coming looking for Jesus for what we can get from God when God is looking for us to give some stuff. And in our giving, we'll find and meet Jesus. Miracle. Daniel, I'm on my way to my seat. I got to get to Cincinnati. It's not only that Jesus shows up in the fire. The miracle in this story in Daniel chapter 3 is not that they didn't get burned. That's amazing. Maybe next time I preach it, we'll shout about not being burned. It's not because they didn't smell like smoke. Maybe next time I preach it, I'll talk about how you won't even smell or look like the trauma that you've been through. That'll be a good sermon. I'll tell you when I'm preaching it. The miracle is not that the flame didn't harm them. When I was reading this text this time, Lydia, what I found is when we read it, the Bible says they were bound up before they went in. That the strongest of Nebuchadnezzar's soldiers bound them up. And that lets us know by hand and by feet. They were tied up before they could get in the furnace. And by the time the story ends, and Nebuchadnezzar looks over in the fiery furnace, yeah, there now are four people there, but they walking around free. This is the shout of the story. That sometimes you might be in the fire, but you still can be free. I'd rather be free in fire than bound up, bowing down to the systems of this world. And I've stopped by to encourage you this morning that you might feel the heat of your struggle. You might feel the pain of what you're going through. You might be frustrated by what you see not going right. But there still is freedom in the fire. That the God we serve is able to make sure you survive even in the most difficult of circumstances. And maybe my brothers and my sisters, we would appreciate freedom more if we realize that God has kept us free even in our fire even in the fiery furnace of debt and you don't know how your credit card bill and how your house note and how your car note is going to get paid you might be in debt and feel the fire of money but God still has you free you might have gotten a bad diagnosis from the doctor come on help me now and you might be ill right now you might still have to make a few hospital visits but God has made you free in the fire of illness. Is there anybody here that's been in hot situations but actually look back over what God has pulled you out of? You still can celebrate the fact that I was free even in the midst of the fire and I thank God that I had to go through it. I thank God uh, that he pulled me through it. Uh, I thank God uh, that I don't have the scars from being in it. Uh, but I thank God uh, that while I was in it, uh, I didn't lose my mind. Uh, I thank God that while I was in it, uh, I didn't lose my joy. Uh, I thank God that while I was in it, uh, I didn't lose my faith. Uh, I thank God that while I was in it, I did not lose my praise. Because even in the midst of the fire, God let me be free. Even in the midst of oppression, my soul still is free. Even in the midst of marginalization, my mind still is free. Even when I'm down in my soul, I'm still up uh, because God uh, 
has made us free. And is there anybody here that can celebrate the fact that I've been through many furnaces? I've been through many fires. I've been through many valleys. I've been through many storms. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend on God. What have I to dread and what have I to fear? I've been leaning on the everlasting arms. I've been blessed with peace uh, from my God so near uh, because I've been leaning uh, on the everlasting arms. Uh, Come with me now uh, to that fiery furnace. Uh, I wonder what they were doing uh, when they were walking around. Uh, I wonder what they were saying uh, when they were walking around. Uh, I wonder what was on their mind. Uh, while everybody else was looking in uh, and they wasn't paying them no attention uh, because they were walking around that fiery furnace with Jesus uh, and that's what uh, I want to encourage you with uh, don't let uh, the fiery furnace uh, steal your attention uh, from Jesus uh, because won't it walk with you won't he talk with you? Won't he be your leaning post? I'm so glad that I serve a God that will be in the fire with me. And I'd rather be in the fire with Jesus than out of it by myself. I thank God that he sent me a Savior that'll stick closer than any brother. Uh, won't it be a mother when you're motherless? Uh, won't it be a father when you're fatherless? Uh, won't it be a friend uh, when you're all by yourself? Uh, is there anybody here uh, that can thank God for Jesus? Uh, that can thank God for your Redeemer? Uh, that can thank God uh, for your company keeper. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your mind regulator. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your heart fixer. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your burden bearer. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your midnight rider. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your rose of Sharon. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your lily in the valley. Uh, that can thank God uh, for your bright and morning star. Uh, that can thank God uh, for that great Jesus uh, who saved your soul. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that can tell God thank you? Uh, somebody shout yes. Uh, somebody shout yes. Uh, Hey, freedom might just be found in the fire. Some fires we can't avoid. Some fires are calling us to step in the heat so that the fire can get fixed. And what we have to trust and believe God for is that if we step in the fire, Jesus will be with us. If we step in the fire, we'll find freedom. If we step in the fire, we'll find the courage. If we step in the fire, we'll find the resources. Somebody is waiting on you to step in the fire. Jesus is not always found in the comfortable places, but Jesus is beckoning us to find a fiery furnace and step in. And watch how God can use people willing to get hot to make a difference in this world. We're standing all over the sanctuary because to endure a fiery furnace 
You've got to have relationship with Jesus. You've got to have the confidence in knowing that the God we serve is willing and is able. And this morning we offer an invitation to you that you can become a part of God's family, become a part of the solution. And maybe you say, Bishop, I'm already saved. I've already got a relationship with Jesus Christ. But you need to join with some other fire walkers. You can't be out here fighting fiery furnaces by yourself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a sense of community. Shadrach didn't have to go in by himself. Meshach and Abednego didn't have to go in by themselves. They had each other. And that's what a church family ought to be. We ought to be together, whether it's in the fire, whether it's in the storm, or whether it's in the sunshine. And we invite you to become part of our family today. If you want to be a part of our family, your tradition is to walk down front, and we welcome you to come. We're beckoning you to come. But maybe you say, I'm afraid of crowds. Amen. Look at that. They're coming, church. Hallelujah. Maybe you're afraid of crowds. There's a QR code on your seat back. You can pull out your phone and you can check on that QR code. I want to join the church. Put it there. Maybe you're watching online. You can put it in the comment section. Any way you decide to come, God has made room for you. Our church family has made room for you. Won't you come this morning? No more change. No more change. My soul is rest. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing that together, church. Hallelujah, they're still coming, church. Come on, put your hands together, make it feel welcoming for them. Come on, let's sing it together. Oh, I am free. I am free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I am free. Praise the Lord. Family, I want you all to welcome Sister Sarah Farmer home. She decided to make Jefferson Street her church home. Amen. She's the niece of Brother Davis. Amen. Brother Davis' niece, and we're so glad.
to welcome you to your new church family. Come on, family, let's love on her. We welcome you home. This is home, and we're glad to have you as part of our family. And family, I also want us to thank God for Brother Josh. He is coming for baptism and to join Jefferson Street. Come on, somebody ought to thank God. I tell you, God know how to answer prayer. He has professed faith in Jesus Christ, and he's going to go through our baptism class ministry. And once he completes that class, we'll take him to the water and we'll baptize another soul. I wish somebody knew how to give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God has been blessing our church family. Amen. And we give God praise. We give God glory and honor. We're going to continue to worship God now through our giving. Y'all take this so I don't lose it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Our ministry workers are doing such an excellent job at contacting, following up, collecting information. Thank you all for doing a wonderful job in doing that. It makes a difference and it means so much. We're going to continue to worship God in our giving. Ways in which you can give to God are posted there on the screen. If you're giving by offering envelope, we ask that you would fill it out completely. If you're giving digitally, you can give at jsmbc.org and follow the prompts of online giving there. Or you can text to give, and that information is there on your screen. Amen. As you're preparing your offering, I want y'all to know I love you all and it's my practice to hug your neck uh, after service, but I've got to go to Cincinnati so I'm not going to be able to stay today, but I love you all, so I'm going to give y'all all a big hug now, amen, yeah. amen, give you my greetings now. Remember, next week and the week after, we are virtually only, virtual service only, Facebook and YouTube will both be up. Y'all know we made it through the pandemic, so we know how to do it and know how to worship God. And we trust God that uh, the same spirit of God that's here with us in person will be with us virtually. And then we'll be coming back together the first Sunday in May to celebrate 137 years as people. I ask that you will hold your giving device or your offering envelope high in the air and repeat after me. God teaches it. I'll do it. Time. If I sow sparingly. I'll reap sparingly, but if I sow bountifully, I shall reap bountifully. The church of God said amen and amen. Oh God, we thank you that you are a God that gets in the fire with us, that we can even find freedom in the fire. We pray, oh God, now that over this next week you would bless us and keep us and give us avenue and opportunity to be fire fighters. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would continue to keep us and bless us and meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We ask now that the goodness of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the gifts of the Spirit will continue to empower and endow us until you return. It's your son Jesus' name we pray. The church said together, amen and amen. Love you all. See you soon.